Man, these really suck. No, genuinely, it's the new vacuum and dust shoe from Box Alien. They really do suck. Hello and welcome to another episode. If you are new to the channel, definitely take a second to hit that subscribe button in the corner to get all the latest tips, tricks, tutorials, and of course, reviews like we are doing today. Now, every now and again, I am caught off guard. I fully expected Fox Island to make a dust shoe, lots of CNC manufacturers do. But when they told me they were sending me a vacuum to review, I was definitely caught off guard. I don't think I know of another CNC manufacturer making a vacuum. Although it does make perfect sense to complete the entire setup. I don't yet know how I'm feeling about the yellow. I'm trying to adjust to it, I really am. But genuinely, Fox Alien, stick to your standard orange. Jamesy likes orange. We're gonna take a closer look at both of these devices. Now, the vacuum itself is pretty compact, but it does have some very nice features, and we're gonna dive into that in a second. We're gonna take a look at the dust shoe and explain the different features on this and how it's quite versatile as well going forward. But just to explain, you don't need to use the dust shoe with this vacuum. You don't need to use the vacuum with the dust shoe. You can buy them both separately and use them separately together. So it is just something obviously to bear in mind throughout this video, but we are going to test them both together. So let's dive in and take a closer look at the vacuum. So straight out of the box, we get a couple of things. Obviously the user manual showing you how to set everything up, a power cord obviously to run everything. We get an air outlet duct and we get the hose itself. The outlet duct sits on top of here and obviously just allows the outgoing air to be channeled through that hose that I've just shown you. Now on the far right hand side here, we can see an airflow control in this little dial. So the thing I do like about that is you can control the power that this is running at. If you're machining something and not really generating much dust, well then there's no need to run it at full flow. You can turn it down and save yourself a little bit of energy. Now we've got the outlet duct on the top here. We've got the inlet on the side here. If I spin this around, I can show you where the power cable goes and obviously you can turn it on and off. But more importantly, if I open this part up, we can then start to see what is going on within this system itself. It is a triple filter HEPA rated system. So ultimately, as the air comes in and passes through the machine, it's going to go through three stages of filtration. The first one is the bag itself over here on the far right, if I pull that out. We can just see that this initially catches all of the dust itself and is also applying a certain level of filtration with this material itself. Now if I pull the second filter out, and I can show you this, we can just see it is a fairly thick filter again just to catch any particles passing through. And lastly, very similar again, just another filtration system ultimately it stops the smaller particles going through at every stage which is obviously better for your breathing and should minimize the amount of fine dust in the air which is ultimately what can actually cause the issues with your chest and breathing. So let's take a closer look at this filter in more detail and understand why it's so important. Now as the air passes through the vacuum it goes to the other filter like the HEPA filter which focuses on the microfine particles going through the vacuum itself. But what can sometimes happen is when you're machining certain types of wood, certain types of plastics and acrylics you're going to get a bit of a smell coming off as they machine through and you can't really avoid that and it can sometimes fill your workshop up and not necessarily make it pleasant and that's where this carbon filter really comes into play. HEPA filters are quite common on other vacuums carbon filters are quite rare and the reason they're important as the air passes through these each of these tiny holes is filled with bits of carbon and that captures the smell in the air. So ultimately not only is the air going to be cleaner going through the HEPA filters, it's going to have less smell coming out the back of it because of this carbon filter, making your workspace, as I say, a nicer place to work and ultimately better air quality to breathe. And that is sort of what makes this smaller vacuum really good and really unique in that it's got a carbon filter as well as the HEPA filters. Now, as I just mentioned, it does have an intake and an outlet. The reason that this is important, it is dual purpose. You can use the intake obviously to suck things up. If you are machining wood, for example, connect it to your dust shoe and it will pull all the dust chips in and ultimately then pump out clean air for your workshop. On the opposite end, you can use the outlet. For example, if you wanted to connect this to your laser as a way of having an air assist in place to blow the dirty air away, well, you can do exactly the same and connect the hose to the outlet, then to your air assist, and ultimately get cleaner engravings when using your laser. 
So before we start getting dust into the back here, I'm just going to do a suction test to see if it can pick this block of metal up running at full power. This is four inches by two inches by about three quarter inches deep. So it does have quite a bit of weight in it. Now obviously you never need to pick up something this heavy in reality. It is just a dust vacuum, but it's going to give me an indication of, as I say, how good the suction is. If it does pick it up, I will slowly turn the power down until it releases it, as I say, just as a test, see how good it is. So there we have it. Not only did it pick it up, it held it quite well and it only released it when I turned the power down to about half. So I'm pretty happy with that to start with. So I did a quick audio comparison between the Fox Alien vacuum and my standard shop vacuum. The Fox Alien vacuum is rated at 85 decibels, but even with the spindle running and cutting through oak, this is only averaging at 81 decibels. In comparison to my shop vacuum, which was averaging 83 decibels, so a two decibel difference in favor of the Fox Alien. Now, people rarely believe me when I say I have a small workshop. I can nearly touch both walls by putting my hands out like that. It is that small. So obviously using CNC machines in here creates a lot of dust. It gets in the air. Even when using them in an enclosure, it still seeps through some of the gaps and can get everywhere. So the idea of a filtration system like this, just to keep everything clean as well as the air and ultimately my lungs, definitely something I am thankful to now have in here. So let's take a closer look at the dust shoe itself and we'll begin with these nice soft bristles at the bottom which won't cause any damage to your material as it sweeps over it but we'll keep a good enough um, suction ring around the bottom to make sure it extracts as much dust as possible. Now if we flip these over and take a closer look at the bristles we can hopefully just see there are actually two different lengths of bristles going on here. The inner ring we have a short set and the outer ring we have a longer set and the reason this is important and if I push all of these in, you'll see there is a clear gap between the two sets of bristles on either side. Now when your bit is spinning at a really high speed, the last thing you want is these to get tangled and ultimately cause damage. So that's a nice little feature having the two different lengths of bristles because it minimizes any risk of that happening. Now the bristles itself, this can be removed, couple of turns one way and it will come off, couple of turns the other way obviously to tighten it all back up and keep it in place. Now the dust shoe itself, this is made up of two halves, you can just take the bottom part off but with a little bit of pressure. It's held together with a set of magnets, obviously nice and powerful, making sure they won't come apart. But it means you can take the bottom half off to change your bits, clean things out and a bit of maintenance. Just goes back together popping it in position like that, holding it nice and secure. Now the diameter of the standard holder is 69 millimeters. This will fit your Dewalt trim router. So that is one of the more common ones that is often used. However, you can drop the 65 millimeter diameter ring um, holder in, and this will fit your average Makita, Bower, Harbor Freight trim router, which are often cheaper options that a lot of people are using now. It will also fit onto something like this 65 millimeter, 1.5 kilowatt spindle that you can run with a VFD. So it will fit quite a few different things. But crucially as well, we can take that out and drop in the even smaller ring. Now this takes it down to 52 millimeters. This will fit most of the spindles that come with the machine as standard, like the three, four, and 501 watt that I have over here. So ultimately it means that when you get your machine, you can start with the standard spindle and this will fit it. And as you upgrade to something bigger and more powerful, well, you just swap it out to whatever you want. And it means that this dust shoe grows with you you don't need to replace it and put by another one as you get a bigger spindle the hose holder itself the inner diameter of this for those interested i think is about 31 32 millimeters the outer diameter is about 37 38 depending at which point you measure on the actual tapered um, cylinder itself Fitting the dust shoe is also super simple. I've got the 65 millimeter reducer in here. We just slide it into place. It does come with an Allen key as well to tighten it up. So once you get it in place and it's deep enough on your spindle or your rotor, you just come in with the Allen key and give it a few turns to tighten it up and it will be in there and now held nice and secure. 
Now if you've seen my previous videos, you will have seen this dust shoe used a few times. Generally anywhere I've used the 65mm spindles or rotors. It is a cheap 3D printed one. It's taken a bit of a battering as we can see here. And instead of using bristles, I put this plastic um, shredded skirt around the bottom to avoid the issue I mentioned earlier with the bristles touching the bit. Now this has done me absolutely fine. It's not perfect, but it has got me through. But what is really inefficient about this particular type of design is as it hangs over the material when you're cutting close to the edge, instead of extracting the dust that is going on where it's being cut in the middle of this bigger port here, it ends up sucking clean air from underneath here straight up through the vacuum. So actually the second this hangs over the material, it becomes really inefficient and ends up missing quite a bit of dust. Now the, the joys of this design is because it's not using this wasted space here, it only focuses on where the bit is actually cutting. All of the extraction comes from this area, goes straight up into the vacuum. So it's a lot more efficient than these bigger dust boots, which as I say, once they hang over, they become less efficient purely because of the way it's pulling the dust through. I did multiple tests with the dust shoe and the vacuum on and off camera, so let me show you how they perform together. So we have a quarter inch two flute upcut bit installed. We're going to be machining this scrap piece of pine. Don't worry about the colour you can see from the front edge, it has just been stained. But a two flute upcut bit in pine should generate a lot of dust, so let's see how this goes. And there we have all the dust extracted, so that dust shoe and the vacuum has done a brilliant job. Nothing left in between all the letters and the tighter gaps, so yeah, very efficient. So the vacuum and the dust shoe performed perfectly. There wasn't any dust left on the job, which is obviously what we expect when investing in a setup like this. Now this wouldn't be a true review though if I didn't point out the one flaw that I actually noticed before we even began the job, earlier on when we were taking a closer look at the vacuum. I kind of only have one attempt to do this on camera, so let's see how it goes. Well obviously once you have done your job, you are going to need to empty the vacuum at some point once it gets full. So when you come to open this, well, there is a little bit of dust here to begin with, not the end of the world. It is simply where it's seeped out of the side um, between the casing and this cover here. So again, not the end of the world, as I just said. But when you do come to empty it, the bag slides out to the side. And we can see straight away what happens when we pull this out. All the dust that we've just collected actually starts to fall out. So what you really need to do is when you come to empty this is tilt the machine up on its side and pull it out so the opening is obviously facing upwards and stops all the dust falling out. Now at this point what I will say is what you should ideally do with these type of vacuums anyway is connect them up to what is known as a cyclone system. It's basically like a cone or cylinder that sits on top of a bucket and ultimately all of the wood chippings and extraction passes through that first and the bucket actually ends up containing probably like 99% of the dust. So you don't end up with as much going into the machine. So ultimately after doing a job like we have just done, there would hardly be anything inside of here. And ultimately it makes the bag and the filters last longer because there is less waste material passing through them. So that would be the one piece of advice I would say is if you are buying a vacuum, whether it's this one or another one anyway, connect it up to a cyclone system. It's just gonna make everything last much longer and save you having to clean out the machine as often. And if there comes a time where you need to clean the inside of this out because the opening is so wide, it is very easy to do. So you can get a brush in there, you can get any excess dust out, or you can do what I do, which is take it into the house and use the house vacuum on the vacuum to clean the vacuum. So I forgot to mention the stats at the start, so we'll quickly run through them now. Well, it's fitted with an 800 watt motor. Weight is 9.1 kilograms, so it is still liftable and portable. And the overall size is a 430, 235 and 292 to the top of this little vent here obviously not including the hose sticking out so obviously for that you're going to get a cleaner job at the end of it a cleaner machine at the end of it but most importantly cleaner air around you whilst you are working which is ultimately good for your lungs and therefore priceless now what is not priceless 
is this machine. It's hitting the market at $299. I can't lie, that is more expensive than I was expecting, especially when people are gonna start comparing this to your average shop vac, which obviously are cheaper. But I have to be honest, upon having it in here, using it, seeing how good the filtration is on it will, you know, as I say, clean air is priceless, and this obviously does a lot more than your average shop vac. Not only the different levels of filtration in it, but even the variable speed on the front, so you don't have to waste energy when you are doing lighter passing jobs, such as 3D carving, where obviously the finished job is quite light. So yeah, the dust shoe is coming in at $49, which I actually think is a bit of a bargain. Obviously, this is going to start with you from a 52 millimeter router that comes with most machines, up to the different trim routers, and even the VFD spindle setup so it's not what you need to keep upgrading this once you've bought it once as I say I actually think that is a bit of a bargain given how many different devices that it does fit now obviously these may be on sale throughout the year so if you are considering buying one definitely check out the affiliate links in the description area below they will always take you to the best price available and if I have any specific discount codes available they will also be listed next to those links as well so definitely check them out I do hope you've enjoyed the video and let me know what your initial thoughts are from what you've seen in today's video in the comments section down below thank you all very much for watching final thanks as always goes to my patrons if you want to get involved for one-to-one -one help giveaways and early access to content then definitely check out those patron links as well i'll see you all in the next episode